the session three is the journey to innovation through university industry linkage. Um, first, we will have the uh, keynote uh, address from our keynote speaker, Lok Chum Tiêu Chia Ha, who is the uh, Deputy Secretary of State of Ministry of Industry, Science and Technology and Innovation. Um, may I invite Lok Chum Tiêu Chia Ha on stage uh, for her presentation? Please welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, did you have great lunch? Thank you. So really happy for to have a keynote speaking today. So first of all, I would like to welcome you, uh, Excellency uh, Professor from uh, and our delegate from the Asian uh, and India uh, delegate to come joining us today. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, India for uh, helping this uh, event for uh, Asian India grassroots event that is which is a really great event for uh, for our strategic partner. Um, which is the objective of strengthening, thing, uh, strengthening uh, the economic cooperation between the AMS and India. Thanks to the Asian Secretariat uh, for helping supporting this event as well, for joining us. Uh, that coming here today. And also would like to thank the Department of STI, the General Department of STI from the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation of the Kingdom of Cambodia for working so hard to help uh, um, coordinate this event. So it's such a great honor for me to do a keynote speaking on the panelist discussion number three, the journey to innovation through university industry linkage. So, as we know, that innovation is the product of innovate, invention and commercialization. Commercialization. So, innovation don't have to be something of the great solution that uh, that the first hand solution. So, it can be solving a problem that is necessary at hand. It doesn't necessarily to be the first solution. But it has a certain innovation element, which is low cost, affordable, value added, sustainable, and scalable, and user friendly. Those attributes will lead to a wider acceptance of the social and innovation. So the grassroots innovation should come from the humble background and aim to develop solution to generate sustainable solution for the organization, community, and society. So it is so amazing. Uh, from the yesterday, I came here for the launching, and I walked around uh, downstairs to see the exhibition from the our sexy booth from the AMS country and also the Indian country. We see so much of innovation in there, especially the creativity and using Internet of Things and science and technology to create a sustainable product that help the agriculture side of it or uh, manufacturing side. 
So this is a very great um, platform for connecting between the government, university, and industry together in a triple helix of collaboration. So we will hear more about from our guest speaker, very great guest speaker today from the country of Malaysia, India, Cambodia as well, and the Philippines on the panel discussion on how to shorten the time from the idea to commercialization and how innovation could sustain and secure market demand and how innovators access market and information. So we know that the university uh, industry linkage is an interaction between the university public research center with the goal of solving the technical problem, working on the innovation project and gathering scientific and technological knowledge. And it's a pathway to the science park through the triple helix of collaboration. So to promote the implementation of Cambodia digital government policy, the 2022 and 2035, and the 2030 science technology innovation roadmap, the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology, and Innovation of the Kingdom of Cambodia uh, had been color collaborated with other ministry to host the largest technology exhibition on the topic of addressing challenge together through the tech talent uh, in November 11 to 13 of 2022 during the Asian Summit uh, as a side event. So Cambodia SDI uh, roadmap focused on five pillars, uh, governance, governance, education, research, collaboration, and ecosystem. So today collaboration between the Asian India through the Grassroots Innovation Forum 2022 highlight our fourth pillar of Cambodia SDI roadmap. We hope that increasing collaboration and networking between SDI stakeholders will bring us closer to our goal of three technology innovation park by 2025 and the university industry linkage office in five university by 2023. So you may wonder what is the benefit of industry from the university industry linkage cooperation. So first of all is the human resources. Connecting human resources or potential graduate reduces the human resource recruitment costs and staff costs for continuing education and providing human resource training. Second is research. So the industry will be able to connect to all the research expert university professor. So accessing, accessing to the research skill and application and a research result in the industry. Third, is technology. So industry can take advantage of the latest technology, methodology, and processes. Four is the equipment and facility. So industry can take advantage of the university advanced technology and lab for their R&D. Five the USB uh, innovation. So the fifth one is innovation. Uh, so industry challenges promote development and commercialization of a technology for enterprise growth. So gain the latest scientific knowledge and research to support the development of enterprise growth and the global competitive. The sixth one is the community. So we strengthen good relationship as a community to enhance the prestige and promote enterprise development.
also be asked again, what is the university benefit from this? So first of all is financial support. So obtaining the university can get the financial support from the industry to do the researches and finding new uh, innovation. Second is internship, which is a core element for the student to have the internship of the real world experience in the industry. So also, it be able for the student to develop the entrepreneurial mindset from the beginning. So third is the job opportunity for the university graduate. It, with the internship skill, university student had currently a good job. So the first one is research. Receive the enterprise research project support. Collaborate on highly complex scientific research and transfer our research results to be applied to the enterprise and acquire intellectual property. The sixth one, is, the fifth one is innovation. So involvement of faculty, student to solve technical problem in the enterprise, get the real data, data available in the enterprise to create the more innovation to support the real world problem. So the sixth one is also the community. We will enhancing the teaching experience of college staff in line with the modern technique and gain knowledge according to the new trend and challenges to develop the curriculum. Attracting the startup or company to locate their base in the university campus. So how about the government? What will be the benefit for the government from this university industry linkage? So as our strategy, uh, Cambodian roadmap, we want to have Cambodia to become the middle income country in by 2030 and the high income country by 2050. So in order to achieve this goal, we need to build our human resources. So to ensure the equitable access to skill development, to build talent and resources to meet our national rectangular strategy. Also, as I mentioned earlier about the SDI roadmap, for us to coordinate the industry and university to work together to achieve our national SDI roadmap 2022-2030. We build a really great network. We create a platform for all of us to network together. So create a collaboration and local and international company and organization. The possibility of partnership is endless from this open platform so that we can have many collaboration together. Also, uh, to ensure the provision and complementary resources. Most of all, with the industry linkage together from the technology innovation, we will be able to, the government be able to create incentive to help support this kind of collaboration. Because government cannot just uh, understand the technology. Sometimes from the private sector, they are more advanced than the government. So we need to learn from the, the private sector to develop a policy that encourage innovation so that the policy will not staggering the, the innovative idea. So this is as I come from the private sector as well to become a government. So I have many hats to play. So I understand very well that some innovation doesn't have the policy to uh, motivate or incentivize those innovation yet. So this is a very good collaborative effort to make a strategic partnership. So the, the sixth one is the community support. So establishing actively uh, activity enhancing the cooperation. So 
So we now at the current context, in Cambodia, we don't have many universities yet that establish the university industry linkage um, office. Um, ICT, this is very uh, right now, that was the first one to establish the university linkage, um, industry linkage office that established in 2014 uh, in the Institute of Technology of Cambodia. So the, it's a unit that's responsible for coordinating and collaborating networking between the ITC expert, ITC service, and private sector. The university linkage, um, industry linkage has played a pivotal role in promoting partnership in business and private sector, creating the strategy and mechanism for the cooperation and monitoring the operating, operational progress to, to ensure the continuous and sustainable cooperation between the ITC and private sector of all level. So uh, this is our, um, we know that the government needs to play an active role uh, to support the university industry linkage. So this is the reason why the Ministry of Industry, Science, and Technology, Innovation of Kingdom of Cambodia have been playing an active role in organizing this event. We hope this great event will prop as work as a platform to build strong network and collaboration between AMS and Indian government and looking forward to future collaboration and any possible bilateral memorandum of understanding. So, so finally, I wish Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Professor, Dr. Uh, and uh, Asian delegate, and student, good health, good luck, and good fortune. Enjoy your stay here in Cambodia, and enjoy networking. Hopefully, hopefully we can see many MOU coming out of this great event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lord Steele, for a very um, informative presentation on the context of the UIL in Cambodia. And to further comprehend about the topic on the university industry linkage among Asian member states, uh, we are going to um, invite uh, our moderator to uh, facilitate the next session. Um, may I invite Dr. Suron Panyarat um, to be the moderator? Please welcome him on stage. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very, thank you MC for your nice introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is uh, I'm, I'm very excited and it is my great pleasure to be a moderator in this sessions and uh, today we're gonna discuss on uh, the journey to innovations through university industry linkage when we talk about innovations I think uh, you heard in the morning sessions uh, they say that innovation can happen from anywhere any place uh, from anyone's and uh, it can happen in a grassroots level, it can happen in industrial level. But for your information, at least at the recent decade, most innovation, uh, some te technological innovation, mostly happen in the lab. For example, our mobile phone, internet, and, and many things else. That's why uh, university play very important roles. And mostly industry and university find it very uh, mutual, beneficial to cooperate with one another. I think uh, Lokim Teo Rata has mentioned already about the benefit of universities and uh, industry from the collaboration. But I would like to re reiterate that uh, on one hand, uh, the industry can benefit from the external sources of knowledge that the research uh, that the university develops through research. And on the other hand, the university move from uh, the traditional approach, let's say focusing on just teaching and uh, learning, and do some research 
entrepreneurial university. The university do the research to make profit, to support further our research, and uh, the industry can uh, uh, use the kind of knowledge to uh, respond to their needs, to address to their issue or something like this. And uh, the, the university can earn profit by, how to say, technological commercialization or spin off activity. I think this kind of topic has been discussed a lot in uh, the, the developed uh, countries and has been uh, discussed in some uh, developing countries as well. And that's why I think that it is a very timely moment for us to discuss on this topic. And uh, today, we have uh, four distingu uh, sorry, five distinguished uh, uh, panelists to discuss on this topic. And it is also an opportunity that we can learn from each other as well, especially if we have a professor from India or something like this. Without uh, further, ado, uh, further ado, I would like to uh, invite our panelists to come on stage with me to uh, talk about this topic. First, I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Samula Mohamed Saleh, CEO of Malaysian Innovation Foundation. Please come on stage. Second, we have Dr. Hal Tanton, lecturer and researcher in the field of IoT and Cloud of Institute of Technology of Cambodia. Please come on stage. Okay. And third, we have Mr. Juan Gabriel Dari. He is a, a social innovation analyst, UNDP Philippine Accelerator Lab. Please come on stage. <laughs> and uh, first, we have Dr. Chin Chai. He is a vice dean of faculty of agro-industry, uh, Royal University of Agriculture of Cambodia. Please welcome. <laughs> and last but not least, Professor Krisma Maruri La Pitak. He is a veterinary and animal scientist. Please welcome on stage, Professor. Yes. And uh, we can see that we have uh, panelists from different countries, from different backgrounds. So I think it is a very interesting discussion. But uh, I really hate to uh, discuss at this time when everyone come back from lunch, tired, feel sleepy. I can see some gentlemen at the back feel so tired. So uh, for this, I would like to ask our panelists to try to be uh, short, sharp, and for our participants, please uh, prepare any questions. I think you can ask any questions throughout the session. Don't need to wait, Don't, no need to wait. And uh, in my house, you can, you can Okay, uh, make movement, stand up, to make sure that you are not sleepy, okay? But please pay attention because it's gonna be interesting, for sure. Okay, uh, without further delay, uh, we can start our dis discussion. So first, actually, I don't want to read through the biogra biography that the team prepared for me, so I will spare some couple of minutes so that our panelists can self introduce, you can, uh, talk something a bit about yourself, maybe something unique or something interesting about you so that our participants can remember you. Not only just this panel discussion, but at a later time. Thank you very much. So first, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Samula Mohamed Saleh, please. You have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and then um, I am so pleased uh, to uh, be seated together with, um, I think, um, the famous and then uh, uh, the best person uh, to talk on the university industry link, uh, linkage. So I am the CEO of Malaysia Innovation Foundation I have started um, to champion the grassroots innovations movement in Malaysia since uh, 2011. So I grew up uh, with Malaysia Innovation Foundation, the only um, agency that focuses on the grassroots innovations and our 
uh, targeted group is from the B40 or marginalized people and also uh, for those uh, excluded group. So my thesis is also on the grassroots innovators sustainability uh, in Malaysia um, and the influence of IOT usage. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting. I think maybe we can talk further in the discussion. I wish to learn more from you. Okay, so uh, let's go to uh, Dr. Halton Khan, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Panjirat. Uh, and also good afternoon to uh, Lucian Tio, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and all participants. Yes, uh, my name is uh, John Thorn. Uh, actually, I'm a lecturer and also a researcher at ITC Collins Short Institute of Technology at Cambodia. And the field is, as uh, you saw, you see in the board, the in the IoT, in the cloud. But besides the teaching, I also uh, participated in the university industrial linkage activity. I'm also a representative of the department. Like in ITC, we have an uh, office. And in the office, we have the structure that they are the representative from all departments. And it's, for example, a graduate school or faculty, something like that. To have. And uh, furthermore, I also joined in the another project that uh, is the joint project between the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Labor that uh, they want to improve the uh, skill labor in Cambodia. So university industrial linkage is one of the main objective that the project aim to achieve. Because uh, the thing that it's uh, the only strategy that can connect, as uh, Lujan Tim mentioned before, uh, the expert from ITC, from the university, to the private sector. And sometimes it's also uh, to dispatch the uh, resource from university to uh, keep or to learn more from the actual practice in the company. So they will have like the industrial relevant and they can sharp their specialty to meet the uh, industrial or innovation. Yeah. That is all for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Bong Jantan. Actually, he is uh, an old friend of mine and I cannot wait to discuss further with him. Okay, thank you very much. Let's uh, move on to Mr. Chuan Gabriel Dari, please. Hello, mic check. So, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Juan Gabriel Dari. I'm from the Philippines, um, and I'm representing. Uh, I'm wearing two hats today. I'm representing the Philippines and also UNDP. Uh, so that's the United Nations Development Program. Uh, so I'm one of their social innovation analysts, where I really get to focus on circular economy, uh, local convergence, and also um, innovation, uh, specifically social innovation. So I, I previously was um, an advisor at the United Nations at the headquarters at, in New York, uh, and uh, I, I moved back to the Philippines, and now I'm, I'm trying to push for social innovation, uh, especially grassroots innovation, in partnership with the Philippine government, so that's the Department of Science and Technology. So I, I have a presentation prepared for later, and I think it'll it will really be uh, interesting to uh, showcase uh, what the Philippines has to offer in terms of grassroots innovation and also where we're uh, going towards in terms of university and industry linkage. Since I understand that while this, uh, this linkage is of course, uh, and, and of course encompasses all the different uh, elements of uh, the, the whole methodology of, uh, of innovation in terms of research, uh, development, uh, production, and even uh, scaling up and marketing, uh, there needs to be an increase uh, uh, or an, an increased collaboration within other forms of uh, stakeholders, such as media, uh, which could definitely help in marketing products uh, coming out of these I UIL. So uh, I'll, I'll get to talk about that later. So I, th I think that's it for now. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Wan. I'll be looking forward to your presentation later on. And uh, let's go to Dr. Chin Chai, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Jin. Jin is my first name. 
So uh, currently, I I work at uh, uh, Royal University of Agriculture. Now, currently, I am uh, uh, writing. Also, other uh, position, I am a lecturer and a researcher also. So my specialist on the food product development. So I will show some uh, case that we uh, work together with the university farmer and we commercial that product to the, the bucket. So I will briefly in the my uh, presentation how we uh, work with the farmer, university expert and private sector linked together to push that uh, product to the commercialization. So that's all my. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Jim. I'd like to the professor, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I am a professor Krishan Pathak. My first name is Krishan. I am a former vice chancellor and uh, former deputy director general in the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Government of India. And I have been a professor in the university for more than uh, 20, 25 years. I am involved in, the, in coordinating the activity related to the innovations, involving the industry as well as university. And uh, I am also associated with NIF, National Innovation Foundation of India, who has sponsored this uh, summit here. With this organization, I am associated for more than 10 years. And uh, I am also advocating the industry people to invest more, as the key speaker has very rightly flagged the issue that the industry should come forward. This main problem here, though we will discuss later on, I am advocating the industry people, look, this is the university and on-site government. So government is not taking so much lead, but the there are many universities in India who are taking lead and inviting the uh, industry people and uh, they showcase the innovations developed by the farmers. Though I am confined to the innovations developed by the tribal people, tribal women, students, related to the agriculture and livestock and fisheries sector. But I feel that this session is very important because these three components, that is university, government and industry, they are the, they needed for the uh, commercialization of any innovation which is developed and if any innovation is not commercialized, then I don't think it is innovation. Okay, thank you very thank much, you very Professor. Much. Uh, I think we have a lot to uh, discuss after this. But uh, before that, uh, we will have a presentation from each panelist. And uh, because we have five people, and I think uh, everyone in the room cannot wait to discuss. That's why I would like to uh, ask again. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we only have five, uh, 10 minutes for each uh, presentation. Please try to be uh, as sharp as possible so that everyone uh, can have a lot of time to uh, discuss. Okay, so I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Samila, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Moderator. Okay, um, let us start with um, Malaysia. So again, um, a very good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the ASEAN India Secretariat for inviting me to speak on behalf of Malaysia's journey, our own journey to innovation through university and industries linkages. Malaysia has experienced a remarkable growth journey since 2011, transitioning from a country dependent on primary commodities like rubber to its present day knowledge and innovation driven economy. While innovation was not unknown in Malaysia, its growth has widened exponentially beyond the limits of science and technology. While Malaysia, Yayasan Innovasi Malaysia or Malaysia Innovation Foundation look at how innovation could be inclusive from the citizens' perspective. So I would like, all right, I would like also Okay, I would like also, all right, yeah, I can see that, okay. So I would also uh, like to thank uh, National 
Innovation of India, NIF, because from our first met and uh, meeting in way back in 2011, we got how to do and practice, implement the grassroots innovation movement in Malaysia. So a big thank you uh, to NIF and the members uh, of their grassroots innovation ecosystem. Yep. At that time, I, I am very new. I was um, only a senior manager and then been tasked to uh, proceed with one big movement called Jeja Inovasi in Malaysia, in Bahasa, which is, um, if we can translate, it's a innovation discovery. Entire Malaysia. So you just imagine uh, the, the uh, allocation received that year in April. So I have 13 states to go another for the next eight months. So you just imagine we have to tap all the states and we have to uh, discover innovation at the grassroots levels at that time. How we make it, it, it is a history. But first, that we come up with the database. We know that India has a lot of database on the grassroots innovation by or for uh, the, the, the community. So we've learned from there, and then we embed technology inside the movement. So I am established one uh, database called Innovation Map. It's still owned by uh, Yim. <laughs> Until now, we have not uh, disclosed to anyone yet, only maybe a uh, first or few paragraph. And then after all, everything is still under us. Then at the moment, we have around 6,000 innovators under ec our ecosystem. So that is uh, the first uh, era of uh, grassroots innovation. It is hard because of our Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation uh, look into the more to the rocket science and whatnot. But we still believe that grassroots innovation and social innovation are the pillar to the growth of our nation. Okay. So let me start with Malaysia Innovation Foundation established under the purview of Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation since 2008. And then we have operational uh, full swing in 2010. Our mandate given is to discover, develop and match innovation development grants. So we are small, but we hold certain allocation to develop whatever innovation at the grassroots from the functional, uh, um, from the functional uh, uh, usage, utilize until up to the commercialization. So we use technology readiness level to measure from technology readiness uh, TRL3 up to TRL8. So that is uh, part of the journey in, the develop, uh, in developing the innovation. So basically, uh, now, like what I say, uh, said just now, we have 6,000 innovators all over Malaysia with all type of innovation that is people's ordinary uh, days, chores, um, any, to face any challenges. And then at the same time, we also increase the quality of life and well-being, especially for the 40% group and those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, then let me uh, go to next. Okay, so here is the secret <laughs> that I'm sharing today is about the services that we offer to all Malaysian. So since its establishment, YIM's role has expanded from only populate 
the innovation we found at the grassroots levels up to empower social innovation and social impact investment by solving a problem through SDI that benefited the community. So if you can see, the SDI element has been one of the main important teams in enabling the effectiveness of the nation's economic, social, security, and environment. There are also being uh, divided into two, the development under products and talent, and then SDI is Okay, from here you can see also under SDIE and culturation, we have the facility, so which I, I will bring you to that. And then we have also outreach. So in a year, 2022, with only 31 staff, we manage 14 programs in a year. So it's even bigger maybe next year. Okay, so um, then you can see also uh, the stages from the development up to funding program. So we are lucky because we are entrusted with uh, allocation from the government, focus on the B40 for the, to the marginalized people and also to the small uh, micro enterprise. Okay, so let me go again. Under the uh, the programs that we call are implementing inclusive social innovation program. We have three main uh, uh, job or task. One is uh, product funding. Number two is development of social innovation infrastructure. And number three is the capacity building. So in all, we also have divided into three one is the funding, we have four funding, uh, the important one until up to the um, establishment of entrepreneurship. Other than that, we also make the SDIE maker space. So we used to, uh, to, to, to name in Bahasa Malaysia, we call it Ruang Reka. So Ruang Reka is uh, to translate in Bahasa in English is maker space. And then at the same time, we have also been support, supported by a collaboration with the financial institution. Uh, we have My MobiFix, actually is a um, helping hand, uh, uh, given uh, some money uh, from HSBC Bank. Uh, it's been two years already uh, to train those unemployed people with the skill to fix the smartphone from home. So, okay, so this is a few about uh, the program. Okay, let me go again. And then only one that I focus today is about the makerspace. So I know that in university you have good makerspace, but of course, our maker space is at the rural or urban rural. So, in this, uh, the concept that uh, we have uh, is to the, the, the space that to, uh, as a platform to design technology and innovation hub that provides educational, training, and uh, technical assistance. So each makerspace is equipped with SDIE appliances and technology application, such as 3D printer, robotics, arts and crafts studio, mini digital studio. We found that uh, the excluded group, uh, the marginalized people, they have a very rich information in terms of basic knowledge, and uh, they, are, they are rich with uh, so much knowledge on superfood and whatnot. But they have less platform to be accessed uh, online and digital uh, exposure. So what we do, we also put 
brand, the platform, we call it Mini Digital Studio. We teach them how to do the uh, marketing of uh, Instagram, Facebook, and a few other social media channels. So the primary objective of Makerspace is to share knowledge, skills, and practical experience through Quintiple Helix, so which is a combination of government, yeah, like us, we are representing the government, industry, of course, like uh, what we have with the financial institution, and other than that, like a uh, few um, international brand, Uniqlo, um, Calvin Klein, uh, other than that, uh, we also have Samsung, yeah? and then academia. So every state will uh, have an opportunity to work with all the local space at their committee. So this is some sort like um, CSI project uh, to the academia, and also uh, involved directly is the committee and the environment per se. So this is to give the opportunities for the committees to use technology and to create activities that cannot be accessed before. So you know, because the internet, the data, uh, the digitalization is expensive in Malaysia. I'm not too sure here, okay? But it's quite, <laughs> it's quite uh, expensive uh, in a month uh, you, if you want to have a fully, exp uh, fully access. So it will cost a lot of money. And at the same time, generating income amongst local committee based on 10 on 10 SEIE ecosystem. We work with many other agencies under Ministry of Science. We have one academy science that come out with the 10 on 10 SEIE ecosystem in the subscription of business match and sharing network economy. So I think you can check it out uh, through the website because this is available online, okay? This is all state in Malaysia. It's one is like a fish, <laughs> another one is like a head of dog, I think, yeah? So you can see from there, okay, uh, we have three ongoing development, seven has been developed, and three will be developed by 2022. So we will prepare everything and tap in all states. So this is the market space that we are doing. Uh, two are flagship, meaning it's bigger, it's better, uh, more equipment. Others are smaller in accordance to their needs. Other than that is also, when you go to the market space, every state has the look and feel differently. So if you go to the uh, East Coast, the color, the f everything is different compared to what we have in the Southern and Northern. Okay? So we just give an experience that ID, the interior design, is also part of the culture. All right? Uh, okay, I can. I have to show you. This is um, the short video uh, from the three maker space that you can see that the feel is different. Even uh, uh, the, the 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 space is also there are bigger. There, there is a small compared to their need. Then we have also a smart. Um, uh, what would we call a uh, smart kitchen? <coughs> Then with the, with the tagline of uh, popularizing science and humanizing technology. Okay? So
so let us do another important thing is about how you want to find the gap yeah between uh, what effort by the uh, ministry of education higher education with the commercialization arm uh, up to the trl9 so you can see in the yellow color that is the fund given funding given by yim other than that we have many um, uh, agencies that also have their particular um, element of importance uh, in um, developing the innovation up to commercialization. So I think this is all the stages and funding agencies, facilities framework. This is where when we talk to the people, to the industry, uh, to the university, then they can see basically what they are going and to fill in between. Okay? So I think that's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okun. Hello. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for your for your presentation. Actually, I think maybe every participant interested in this, this presentation, especially in what uh, she called maker spaces. I think very interesting. And then uh, he also mentioned about a funding agency at a different stage of uh, the, 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 I think, a TRL, right? Technology readiness level. Yes, yes, very interesting. So uh, let's move on uh, to uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Chanton, please. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, uh, very good afternoon again. Uh, welcome to you, ladies and gentlemen, and all participants. Yeah. Uh, so today, uh, I just like do a brief presentation about what is uh, your office of ITC is doing, and some activity that we done and what we plan to do as well. Yeah, so I just uh, start from the basic uh, overview. So uh, as uh, you know, like uh, ITC plan to establish this office in the region is uh, to be like the center for increased collaboration between uh, university and private or other public sector. So this will be the, the hub or will be the gateway that uh, can connect between uh, internal resource of ITC or what ITC can offer to the private sector or to the public sector. Yeah. And the mission is uh, we want to promote uh, our service. So the service here is uh, regarding to like the short course training, like professional short course training, uh, lab testing, because we have some equipment. So in case that other private sector need to test something, they can come to us. And also consulting service as well. And uh, regard, beside this, it's also related to research and innovation that uh, we need to strengthen, that uh, we can transfer our knowledge and other necessary uh, funding or technology transfer to the public or private or community. And uh, Attitude that uh, we plan to achieve uh, regarding to the reason and mission is uh, the first one is to increase the collaboration, yes, between the university and private sector. That this will lead the benefit, generate the benefit for student, for lecturer, for researcher, and also for industry. And to make this happen, uh, we need to have like proper planning, strategic planning. Uh, we have like activity implementation, m and &E, to make sure that it works according to our plan. Yeah, so this slide I think uh, can be the brief from the previous slide that uh, the main uh, point that 
ITC is focusing on. So the first one is uh, the technology transfer. Because, uh, we do some research, and then maybe the, some kind of research could be like uh, an innovative thing. And it can be protected by intellectual property, and then it can be transferred to the private sector. So the, the office will uh, try to maintain this, try to connect this to the private sector, try to find the private sector that best fit to the uh, technology that we have developed in school. Another thing is uh, regarding to the uh, research and development and also applied research. So sometimes we doing research, but uh, to make sure that uh, the research is fit to industrial need. So the office uh, play a very important role to connect to the private sector. So in this case is that we want to develop a new project, but we don't know what kind of technology that is best fit to the private sector. So this can be the uh, perfect place that the URL office can connect to some private sector to develop the joint project together. And the last one is uh, for the education or academic purpose. So the office will like, uh, work closely with the industry, try to connect with the industry, try to uh, check the update of the industry, and then they gain the feedback from the industry to be the input to the curriculum modification uh, for the student uh, for internship. Yeah. So this is also the, the role of the University Industrial Linkage of ITC is doing. Yeah. So uh, we start uh, established in uh, 2014, and from uh, 2015 uh, is the time that do like the uh, capacity development. And in 2017, the ITC also create like the incubation center that support for the startup for the student startup, technology startup. And 2020, like, uh, the still like, improved the activity strategic plan of the office and the very support like from uh, loan from ADB or World Bank. And that we need to the future is uh, we want to reach our vision. Yeah, so we need to do another uh, concrete planning in the future. So this is the structure that uh, we are uh, having right now. So uh, we have the few team director in charge of uh, cooperation uh, inside. And also uh, in the office, there is the head of the office, the beauty head. And also representative from the department, faculty, various school, uh, incubation center that they can work together uh, to uh, connect to the private sector. And as uh, I mentioned above, like, uh, the role of the main role of the office is to go partnership. So the partnership for research, partnership for uh, technology transfer, partnership for uh, curriculum development, improve curriculum development, uh, improve like, the job for the student. Yeah. And also uh, promote the service, like testing or uh, consultation service as well. So service here is uh, ITC uh, focus on train, training service, testing, consultant, and some short project contract service to develop some small project or other thing. And I think it's responsible for like documentation, coordination, MOA, MOU, contract, and also office do the marketing to promote what we are having to the other party. So this is uh, isn't similar to the previous one, like the service that we focused. Uh, the first one is a university service. The second is uh, for student. And the last one is, uh, we can say like for innovation, that uh, we try to work closely with the private sector to find the real need of the industry. And then we develop or uh, implement the project that solve the specific problem of industry. Uh, this just slide to show some activity uh, of the office that support like 
uh, student visit, carry for uh, some uh, innovation, uh, technology uh, competition. Yeah. Um, some partner that we are working on at, at ITC. And the last two slides is just uh, some service that we have done that regarding to the uh, training, consultation, lab testing, uh, support the startup competition, support the career fair, uh, company visit. Yeah. So I think uh, this is all from uh, my side. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bong Chen Thorn, for uh, your presentations about ITC on uh, University Industry Linkage promotions. I would like to accommodate one more presentation before uh, we have a short break for ref uh, refreshments. So uh, let's move on to uh, Mr. Wan, right? So thank you for uh, passing the baton to me and uh, thank you for uh, the presentation so far. Uh, I'll be quick uh, so we could also go and take our refreshments. But uh, just going back in the perspective of grassroots innovations, uh, my, my presentation will be focusing on this rather than the university, uh, the UIL linkage. So, so here, um, good morning everyone. Thank you for again inviting me to present our grassroots innovations journey in the Philippines. So my presentation will be coming again from the other side of the spectrum, which is a bit gritty, but still exciting. So just to give an idea of what I'll be presenting today, my presentation is divided into three parts. The first part is about effects of COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. The second part will give you a walkthrough on our grassroots innovation journey in the Philippines. And finally, I will end with a couple of takeaways from our work with grassroots innovators. So let me begin by uh, providing you a quick briefer on the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects in the Philippines. So 60% of MSMEs have stopped operations, while others adopted uh, reduced working hours or at all work from home schemes. So more than 1.19 million workers were affected by the lockdown. 40% of population experienced decline in income, mainly due to livelihood. Na and lastly, 50% received some form of support from the government through cash transfers. So. During, during the pandemic, we observed that local governments, private businesses, as well as ordinary citizens have somehow innovated and provided solutions despite the constraints of the lockdown. So the signal that surfaced in our foresight work at the Accelerator Lab UNDP is that innovation is everywhere. Uh, most of these innovations during the pandemic center around health, wellness, livelihood, access to digital information and services. We have also observed that most of these innovations that are happening on the ground are usually not documented and mostly done in the informal sector. So since government services usually target those in the formal sector, uh, meaning those that are legally registered, we miss these sectors that are not registered, uh, that are actually uh, the ones who are in most need of innovation. So the question then is, how do we capture these innovations in the peripheries. So we realized that by acknowledging that they exist, we will be in the best position to provide the needed support for these grassroots innovators. So the pandemic has also provided us with the best time to incubate a program that we call uh, the Grassroots Innovation for Inclusive Development Program uh, in partnership with the Department of uh, Science and Technology in the Philippines. So GRIND is a pioneering program of DOST uh, and supported by UNDP Philippines that aims to empower marginalized communities by developing and strengthening its existing grassroots innovations and establishing the GRIND program nationwide. So uh, you can see here the GRIND 4L framework uh, where we really want to try and include the normative linear approach to innovation which usually starts with research development, production, and then finally marketing and or scaling to a, method, to a methodology that captures all of these under a pentahelix approach that includes the active and strategic participation of industry 
academe, civil society, media, and government, and all of these processes. So this promotes a strategy that pushes for an ecosystem approach to grassroots innovation and all the other linkages that come with it, including university and industry linkages. So you can see here the pentahelix model. Um, uh, and again, uh, it's, it's really not constrained to the normative GIU uh, linkage. So it really encompasses um, the whole ecosystem of innovation, who, who, who the counterparts are, who the different actors are uh, that are ultimately influencing each other. So the DOSD partnership, we are providing capacity building, especially on the Seliklak by Solutions Mapping methodology, which I'll be talking about later. Uh, technical support and advice on the national implementation of the GRIND program. Co-developing of the GRIND uh, grassroots innovation database. And also linking to global grassroots innovation network. So we are pushing for this uh, local or global local network where um, this, this could be a model that allows for a more accelerated and simultaneous global and local learning. Now moving forward. Uh, so what is the select lock by that I mentioned earlier? So um, the DOSD grind program's core component is the select lock by solutions mapping adventure. Shol solutions mapping is a signature and core methodology of the accelerator labs. So Salik Lakbay is actually a combination of two Filipino words, Salik Sik, which means research, and Lakbay, which means to travel. So we, pro we, we primarily use the social innovation tool to map grassroots innovations and solutions in the countryside, uh, also in, uh, in informal sectors within the city, and also, uh, also the communities that are outside of uh, the peripheries and also the margins. So our goal is really to identify needs, issues, and opportunities by looking for solutions developed by the people and are often not recognized or overlooked. And we see these every day no? in, in our neighborhoods. And it takes a lot of humility for one to acknowledge that ordinary citizens have the capacity to innovate and become active participants in the innovation story in our country and also in our economy. Uh, so to date, uh, we have... Uh, these, so I, I, I will go into detail, I'll, I'll parse through it quickly. And also we have, uh, yeah, we, uh, we have nature-based solutions, sustainable livelihoods, indigenous crafts and technologies, ethnobotanicals, heirloom recipes, user-led and grassroots-based uh, innovation, technical feasibility innovation that are, that are also widely used by the communities. Uh, and all of these are, have the potential for scale. So at this point, uh, let me share with you some takeaways that we have learned from our grassroots innovations journey in the Philippines. So ultimately, um, serendipity or uh, encountering something by chance is a big component of inclusive innovation. Uh, it, it serves to be an attitude and an aptitude for making unintended discoveries, often by accident. So we, we need to take advantage of the things that come unanticipated, unexpectedly, and also uh, solutions that are unsought from the least likely, right? So, so even or, or ordinary citizens really uh, have that uh, drive for innovation. So, and also leveraging the global, uh, the global network through a multi-stakeholder and ecosystem approach. So approaching the implementation in a more systemic way by promoting, and uh, by, by promoting and including the SDGs and involving a diverse set of stakeholders. Um, the, the third uh, lesson learned would be utilizing storytelling to advocate for the movement. So humanizing science and innovation through real stories as a way to change attitudes, advocate for a cause, drum up support, and call supporters to actions. The, sorry, the fourth one would also be multi-sectoral support to build and strengthen the grassroots innovation ecosystem. So this means that innovation in the peripheries, usually coming from the informal sector, needs to be legitimized. Um, by institutionalizing the support they need to build and strengthen the ecosystem. This includes policies that acknowledge, enable, and support GI. So lastly, uh, allow me to read uh, a quote 
no, from uh, Anu Kutta. So rather than looking at inhabitants of poor regions collectively as a sink for aid and advice, we need to recognize their contributions formally as a source of inventions and innovations. So minds at the margins are not marginal minds. So thank you, salamat po. And, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Juan, for your presentation on the journey of grassroots innovation in the Philippines. I found it very interesting, and it shared a similarity between uh, Malaysia on social and inclusive innovation to Seoul from the grassroots level to the global level. Okay, uh, for now, I think we can uh, take a short break before we start uh, presentations. So Great, because uh, I think one of our panelists will leave at uh, 4, so can you try to wrap up without break, and then we can leave early, that's better. Okay, we can, we can continue about this. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much. There it goes. Actually, I don't want to break as well. <laughs> and uh, for the participant here, maybe you can go out and grab the drink or the food and come back, and then we can continue our discussion. Okay, okay without further delay, let's go to um, Dr. Jin Wright. Please uh, share about your presentation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chahai Chin. Yes, I will say briefly what we are doing. So uh, I just uh, actually uh, just focus on food processing. So uh, we, because uh, my specialty in on food processing and product development, that's why I don't know what uh, between the link cake between university and industrial. In my case, I just will to show one case that we are developing our traditional product to commercial like here. Uh, maybe you already know is uh, Riley Kerr, I think. Uh, we call Sratakao. This one is a uh, 40% alcohol percentage, 25%. So, uh, so, now I, I just uh, would like, actually yesterday we, yes, uh, yesterday we, we, we saw some other product also at uh, the exhibition, but today is no. Uh, so actually uh, I just would like to show some innovation or co-processing that we work in RUA. So, I think this one you know already is right liquor in Cambodia. But uh, however, the, the our product still in the local market, just a uh, just a uh, local uh, f sell for only local person, and uh, the quality also is still uh, very limited, very low quality. That's why we choose that this product to uh, develop to high quality, and we package and we do for commercial. So what we are doing? So briefly, I have uh, about the Royal University of Agriculture. So second, I just uh, saw about the product development in case study of rye liquors. And uh, the third one, just uh, 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 what kind of service that our faculty or university we can provide for food processing. So firstly, I would like to uh, uh, say about the history. Our university established during 1964. So until now, it's nearly uh, 60 years already. So during 2000, uh, 2021st, we are very reformed. So we made the uh, strategy, new strategy, we reform on the financial management, human resource, IQA, planning, academic program. Why we, we do uh, 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 reform? Why we need to improve? Because we would like to grow by the uh, academic program and research. So in this, however, we have uh, two missions. The first mission is provide uh, immediate to use high quality graduate in agriculture. Because uh, 
in in Kenya, uh, uh, University of Agriculture has uh, the biggest is uh, Royal University of Agriculture that we, we can call uh, RUA, just short. And second, we produce basic applied research output link with market and grow. So this is uh, the big mission that our university to, to do this. So after that, what our university do? What the rule of university? So this one I just would like to say that education, research, and industry link. So this, uh, we would like to promote this one. And RUA provide education, become the specialist with the high productivity and new product become to uh, uh, productivity and grow. And even the research, RUA is just one part, the basic and applied research to new technology and new product for the uh, productivity and growing. So in RUA, we will focus on the animal and poultry uh, product, fish and fishery product, crop uh, production, food science and natural resource, and rural uh, development. Because in our university, we have 10 faculty different. So that's why we focus on agriculture and include food science in here. Food science is uh, my faculty. And what we are make, we just, uh, okay, we suit. When the student created from RUA, uh, the, the student, uh, the making student to be the uh, quality, relevant, uh, better job, and uh, better work. Why we focus like that? Because the young generation, they don't want to study agriculture anymore. That's why we need to improve the academic program. We need to Im improve the uh, research agenda. What is the interest for food, for agriculture, for fishery, for anything that uh, we can promote? That's why our uh, university need to reform, need to improve even the uh, facility also we, we do like that. So, in here, I just focus on uh, a case study of Rileykers. Actually, we have history. Five years ago, we worked with a Japanese professor from the Nagoya University, and we worked with experts from the private company in Japan to develop the, our liquor. They asked me, why do you, you don't want to develop the traditional uh, product? So they say that uh, we are uh, conducted away in the whole country, and we, we find out that Rileyker is most important uh, to improve, to innovate on that product because this one is our product. That's why we propose in here is uh, traditional, and uh, finally we have the product in here. So, so this uh, briefly about the, our activity. The first, we observe that okay, the Rileyker has only put in the tank, plastic tank, and uh, uh, sell in the local. And after that, it's just a bottle. So we would like to push that product to commercial life. That's why what we should do in here. So university, RUA, we cooperate with the farmer. On the side, we have experts from the international, especially we work with the Nagoya University, plus expert, technical expert from the outside, to observe how to make the guideline guide for developing the uh, rice liquor in Cambodia. So after that, we produce the uh, guideline already. However, the quality, we would like to check the quality, what we do during the exhibition. Every year, we conduct a, a survey, the testing with the, the, the product that we already improve the quality compared with the traditional one. How much is different? How much the quality is changed? Will, ac will be accepted by the uh, consumer or not? And after that, we will uh, uh, disseminate to uh, disseminate the processing. So thi this one I just saw briefly. What are we doing? What we are improving? So we have. Uh, in, in here, we, we separate uh, uh, three 
uh, we, we have five steps, the technical and technical issues, what we are evaluate or modify, and what is the result, and we evaluate the quality. So we do uh, so the actually the trade in, in here we just focus on sanitation the first step and second step is the uh, 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 the method of the cooking normally traditionally they boil they boil and after that we just modify it to be modified to the steam because the steam no burn dry so the burn dry will be become the smoky smoky smell if the smoky smell in the final product is not so good we like to smoke but we don't like the smell of smoke so that's why we need to improve that that's one and the sanities and also in here we have uh, normal and we modify and the most important also is the water that uh, the farmer use they use only the pond water because uh, a little bit they don't know what is happened if you use that that's not so good it's become the the smell is uh, mandi or something like that. And after that, we improve everything. Sanitation, check the temperature, use the quality, uh, uh, use the quality of water, and curing fermentation. And after that, the, f the, the fermentation is very good. And the distillation, the third part is most important also. The separate of the quality. The farmer, when they distillation, they meet together. That's why we produce the 40% and 25%. If we separate the high S1 and the, the medium one, just we can put one, two product. If we put together only one product, that's why 25, 40% alcohol. So you see in this picture also, very clear and very cloudy in here. So we, add, we, we can sell this, uh, the separate quality. And after that, we evaluate, we check the quality in here so mostly they like the improved quality one and what we are doing with the farmer and the, uh, with the, this product actually if we don't register to uh, um, um, o, um, OC or ministry or industrial so the product cannot sell this product we already registered at both Actually, uh, before the COVID-19, this product very popular. We sell in the airport market. So during the COVID-19, we don't have the tourism. Uh, the, the selling is very down. So what we are doing with this uh, project, with this product, we work with the farmer, we work with the uh, expert, we work with the university together. So farmer is the producer. The check quality is university, the packet, the bottling is company. So this is a cycle that we are, our university work to get this uh, model for, for, for uh, uh, food, process, food processing. So the, the final one is uh, just only uh, what we are, can provide. So we can provide the technique for product development, satellite assessment for food product, packaging technology, Processing technology on beef, bread, bakery, meat, uh, cereal, fruit, or vegetables, seafood, and uh, we have some ingredients. And we, we provide the training also for food safety, even uh, control for human food, GA, GMP, and hazard. And the, the last one, we have the, uh, we provide the basic knowledge for the food in, in the premise. If the premise they want to, to, to work, so actually, currently we work with uh, some uh, cashew, cashew nut uh, uh, in, uh, handicrafts, some province. We are work with uh, them to develop the, the test. That uh, with uh, we have already cashew nut, and we improve with the different tests, traditional tests, or with the spiky test or honey test. That we are work with that one. So and uh, also we have some ingredient in here. So thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Doctor, for uh, uh, sharing with us about uh, Georgia University of Agriculture and the real example of the wine. And I think 
Maybe we can take it later. <laughs> Thank you very much. And okay, uh, let's uh, welcome our last presenters, uh, Professor Krishna. Please, yes, you can come to the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. And good afternoon again to all of you. Uh, let me first uh, congratulate National Innovation Foundation India and uh, Department of Science and Technology, as well as the ASEAN Committee on Science, Technology, and uh, Innovations for organizing the third uh, for, uh, summit of uh, Grassroots Forum Summit here and so successfully. I am really very happy. Yesterday I took the uh, round of all the exhibits and I was so happy to see that the purpose of this making NIF or making this forum, ASEAN India Innovation Forum, is getting success by seeing the innovations uh, depicted yesterday or today in the exhibition. So I want to congratulate all of you and those who have come, the students and the innovate, uh, grassroots innovators from the different countries. Uh, friends, as you know that uh, uh, this morning, uh, Professor Das uh, from India and uh, Dr. Tusar Garg, while moderating yesterday's uh, session, they both uh, deeply narrated the role of NIF and the role of NIF in uh, coordinating between the ASEAN countries to promote the grassroots innovators. So I want to congratulate them also and I will not go uh, in detail of the NIF and other things but definitely would like to touch the issues raised by the key speaker this afternoon that what are the role of the university or the title is that innovation through university industry linkages. Uh, as a teacher, as a professor, as a administrator, and now as a grassroots, helping the grassroots innovators, I think that this is the most important session. I am not saying that the earlier session were not important. But the session, if uh, you look about the innovations, whatever innovations is uh, developed, because everybody is having inherited knowledge uh, for the innovations. And in the uh, uh, inaugural session, it was made very clear that the, uh, the all the government, all the government of the ASEAN countries, they want to promote the grassroots uh, innovation, innovators. But uh, when I say that these three, these three important uh, component are very important, means the university is very important, the government is very important and the uh, industry is very important. Now, uh, I take you 75 years back uh, in the history of our country. That earlier, people were not talking about the innovations. People were developed and in Hindi we call it Jugal. You, uh, you don't understand that word, but uh, for innovations there was a Hindi word, Jugal means you develop any technique which is useful for the people. But there was no system, there was no forum to support all this type of the innovations. But now, for the last few years, the, the present government led by Mr. Narendra Modi ji is promoting or uh, they are encouraging the student, they are encouraging the grassroots innovators and there is no uh, 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 funds are available. And in that, uh, that has happened due to the involvement of National Innovation Foundation. I am not advocating the role of the uh, NIF but I am telling you the success story. In my presentation also you will get uh, some success story. But definitely uh, the things are taking, uh, 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 some changes are taking place in our country as well as in ASEAN countries. Earlier when I was professor in the university for the 30 years, we were going to the industry, we were knocking their door. But they were not coming to the university. I have seen in USA, I have traveled more than 24 countries. 
I have found that in you go in Europe, you go in uh, USA, large number of the industries, they invest in university. But it was not happening in India. But now it is happening in India. But it is now it is happening in uh, ASEAN countries. You all made a presentation that what is the role, what positive thing has. Now these innovators, these grassroots innovators, they know that yes, there is somebody. There is somebody who is there to support us. Now, come to the, uh, what I, my role is that now after my, uh, my retirement, though I am on the, uh, I am in the advisory committee of government of India on uh, livestock health. I am a chairman of the animal health board of India. So I, I my, my role is confined to the livestock and agriculture sector. But I, uh, I am also playing a role as a coordinator and telling the industry people, look, here is a brain in the university. Who look, this is, they are the tribal women in our country. They look, they are the farmers who they need your support. So any innovation, if it is there, and if it is not commercialized, and commercialize will take place only after the role of the industry is there. If industry people are there, then definitely that innovation will go uh, further. Otherwise, that innovation will not go and it will remain. And the another thing which I am, I want to share the success story in India, that now in most of the universities, whether it is a government university or it is a private university, large number of incubators are being set up. In every university you will see the incubators are there. So they keep these uh, technology there, they promote, and by organizing this type of the summit, I think this is the best way to promote or to encourage the grassroots innovators. So this is my views about that. I congratulate the uh, key speaker. You really flagged the three issues. They are the most important issues. And uh, the, the policy maker, the, the presentation made by uh, Dr. Professor Das was about the policy and regulation. Now this, your presentation should be a part of, uh, should be also included in the policy and regulation. Yes, this is the role of the government. This is the role of the university. And this is role the industry. So then this whole uh, uh, whole exercise or you can, you can say the, the, the work of all the people involvement involving the university, involving the industry will get success. So this is uh, one my one uh, issue. And validation, validation of every innovation is required. Validation is the most important. Whenever I go in the, uh, in the meeting with the NIF, uh, with Dr. Tushar and uh, his uh, colleagues there. I always give emphasis, look, every innovation has to be validated. And for validation, university is the best uh, place. So we should involve the uh, university, we should involve the uh, institution persons for the validation. Once it is vali uh, validation means scientifically validated. Not by saying it should be scientifically validated. If I say that this, this product is good for uh, agriculture, then the, it should be validated by the farmer and it should be validated in the field, in the large uh, sample size should be there. So uh, these are some of my views uh, on the journey of innovation, but I will also share some of the success stories. And uh, this is the really, I again congratulate Dr. Tusar and your organization for making the people, uh, they know now what is innovation. And uh, this is, uh, this yes, since yesterday I am seeing that how much students are taking part in that. Now this, uh, this has been uh, covered by uh, Dr. Das uh, this morning. Very well, you know creativity and every, and every individual have the creativity, every individual have the inherent creativity they, and the knowledge should be converted into uh, uh, innovation. This we are talking since yester uh, yesterday. Now what innovation now they do, they are the bridge between the industry and the academia. This we are talking today. This is the uh, discussion of this session that how uh, inno uh, innovation, uh, industry and academia can play a role in uh, uh, promoting the innovation. Now, promoting creativity at the grassroots also, this was also covered by uh, Professor Das uh, this uh, morning, so I am not, I am just escaping it. But I will show you some of the success stories. Now, this NIF builds a bridge between formal and informal science, technology and innovations. 
incubate ideas, they incubate ideas, the, in, the innovations and outstanding traditional knowledges, practices for diffusion data without value addition. Now value, de, uh, value addition, somebody also mentioned about the value addition. Value addition is again a very important part of the innovation. Now these are the, some of the success story of the innovations developed uh, uh, through NIF. Now to promote these uh, success story or to promote these uh, innovations, this morning um, mentioned by Professor Das also that the government of India is now promoting them through so many awards. They are giving national awards. They are na giving national prizes so that these innovators, for example, this farmer, he has developed the variety of the uh, cauliflower. So now this farmer it feel proud when the government uh, come to their house and uh, their home and their door and they give the award then he feels and the neighbor people because the innovations they also uh, uh, teach you the, the competitiveness. So they say that yes I should also develop some uh, innovation. Now uh, innovation incubation chain uh, nowadays now they are being developed. This is already covered by Professor Daso. Now, yes, uh, our uh, panelists from Malaysia, you were mentioning about the database. Yes, we feel proud, India feel proud that we have large number of the database available with us, pool database of more than 340,000 ideas and inventions. We have th more than 700 grassroots innovators and outstanding traditional holder recognized under binary national grassroots innovation. Now, these all grassroots innovators or outstanding innovators, they they uh, they are honored, they are awarded every year. Now between 2016 and 22, total of seven grassroots innovators supported by NIF have been confirmed with Padam Shri. Now most of you don't know what is Padam Shri. Padam Shri is the highest national award, which is given by the uh, President of India. So now the farmer, the traditional farmer, the tribal women who were involved in developing the innovation, they were not knowing. Now the present Prime Minister, he developed a system that a, a woman, tribal woman sitting 800 kilometer away from Delhi, if she had developed some innovation, then she should be given the Padam Shri and the examples are there. So this is the real method to promote and I, I, I request, humbly request to all the ASEAN countries to follow this type of the practice in your country also. Now nearly 2,000 technologies have been supported at different levels through various mechanisms. Patent, yes, large number, more than 1,000 patent have been filed and they have been granted also. This is again a promoting factor for them. 24 design registration, they have been registered uh, with the industry uh, council. 78 plant varieties, yes, 78 plant varieties. Usually people think that the varieties, they are developed by the scientist. But in India, these plant varieties, they have been developed by the farmers. And most of them are the women farmers. The interesting thing is they are the women farmers. Then innovation-based enterprise project have been supported. And the positive output of all these activities is that now the industry people, they have started visiting the university. They are coming to the university campus. They are now ready to support the uh, project. And many universities, they very proudly display in their advertisement for admission, look, this is the industry which has, which has investing in our university for promoting the innovations. So this type of the, likewise, inspire award, idea, innovations. So, and today, tomorrow, uh, you are also going to give the award to the winners. So these are, these are the things which has to be promoted. Now, these are some of the examples. Our mini, uh, science and technology minister always involve any, you, you organize any program for the uh, grassroots innovators, he will definitely come. Yes, the president of India giving the award. This is the uh, uh, former two president, three president are here. One, oh, sorry. Three presidents, they are, they are visiting the, the, uh, exhibition and they are uh, promoting and uh, supporting the students who have developed, who are the grass uh, root promoter, uh, innovators. This is again an example of innovation. Then, then we have an innovation portal. Portal is also there where you can get the information about the activities, what are the research projects being uh, uh, running in the different universities. Now there are the some selected notable stories. 
Uh, again, uh, the napkin making machine, which is again here, somebody has depicted. Again, President of India giving award to the innovators. So these are the some success stories. Now, by seeing these success stories, people, they, they feel encouraged. These are the some success stories of our, again, uh, this is a, a minister. Uh, apple variety developed by, uh, by the villagers. Now, see Lord Ganesha, there is a big demand for such uh, things uh, in, in India during the festival season. And they are all eco-friendly also. They are all eco-friendly. Look, our uh, dynamic Prime Minister, Sri Narayan Modi ji, so, so he always talks, uh, yesterday also in the presentation of Dr. Diksha, you, uh, you show, uh, you seen uh, the, the picture where the Prime Minister is congratulating her. So this type of the things is required. Now there are the some range of products. Then technological innovation areas. What are the technical uh, engineering, agriculture, plant variety, veterinary? I am involved in these two agriculture, plant varieties and veterinary science. So I am involved in that. Now, this is again a project, uh, th this is a product. Now, there is a important uh, or very important disease in the livestock, uh, uh, that is mastitis is the, the, the cows which give more milk, they suffer from this disease. So now this uh, product has been developed through the uh, innovation developed by the farmer. This again a product. These are the some miscellaneous innovation related to, uh, I'm sorry, I have taken three, four minutes more. Miscellaneous improved plant varieties. Then technology transfer, tractor operated paddy transplanter, big demand. In the, in the villages there is a big demand and John Deere, you know, this is a uh, manufacturer of the tractor. So he has adopted this technology. Now they are the, uh, you look, uh, uh, on our, we are on the NIF uh, center and um, in Amazon also. So th this is some of the success stories. So in the nutshell, we should uh, encourage the industry people, we should organize more and more uh, meetings with the industry people, not on, uh, only in the NIA forum, but uh, throughout the year we should uh, invite them and we should tell the, 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 the benefit of innovations and how the, because these innovations, they give you the indirect business, they give you the indirect economy. And this indirect business and indirect economy is uh, very important, is, is, is important for all ASEAN countries. So with this, uh, I again thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, for giving me, and I'm sorry that I am taking two, three minutes more. So with this, uh, thank you very much again. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Professor, uh, for highlights important of uh, university and the linkage, and uh, especially the uh, st uh, successful story and what we can learn from India, because uh, India do quite well on innovations that I think uh, we, ha we have a lot of to learn from. Okay, uh, I think uh, we can move on to the uh, discussion sessions. And I hope that uh, our participants have uh, prepared questions already. And like I mentioned at the beginning of our discussion, this is an opportunity that we can learn from each other. So actually the participant, of, uh, I, I mean the panelists can also ask each other as well if uh, you have any question or some clarification. But uh, because I know that uh, Professor will, will, will leave soon, right? So, so I would like uh, to pose the first question to him before he leaves to another meeting, if I'm not wrong. Actually, uh, you, you mentioned the importance of uh, university or industry or government or something like this. But I'm curious, uh, what is the critical need, the critical needs for the successful of UIL for, uh, let's say, innovation at the grassroots level? You can share with, uh, let's say, Cambodia that need to learn from you or something like this. Yes. And one more thing, what is the challenges? Yes, the yes. major challenge is that, that the first thing which I experience with my uh, 40 year experience that industry people they hesitate. They hesitate to the come to the door of the academia. So we have to first uh, tell them we have to develop the trust in them. 
that whatever investment they will do in the university, they will get the, sometimes what happens, a very practical thing, many times many university they don't give the uh, audit account because these, these people they want audit of the whatever money they have given. So they don't, many university they don't submit the audit account, they don't give the final report in the time. So these are the small things, though they are very small things, but they are the actual riders. They stop them, the industry people. And uh, you should also, we should also tell that this uh, for the purpose they have invest, they are investing in the university is really uh, going to give the fruits and the society will be very fitted. So if such type of the means we have to, pro we have to organize awareness program for the industry people and more and more interactive meetings should be organized because in USA as I mentioned USA and the UK or in Europe. Uh, there is a tradition, usually people, uh, the industry, they regularly invest, uh, but I don't think even in, uh, I don't know Cambodia whether universities or in Malaysia or in your country, how many industries they are here. But certainly by seeing such type of the success story to them, definitely we can attract them. And, uh, and uh, in this area, in this, the NIF is really playing a very important role. After the establishment of the NIF, and after this uh, Dr. Neil Gupta's uh, involvement, now if you go in the villages, even in the remote villages, now people know, yes, if I develop this variety, definitely there is, a, there is somebody who is going to uh, recognize me. So this type of the atmosphere we have to develop. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Professor. Uh, how about, uh, uh, Pascal, did you have anything to add? Especially uh, Malaysia doing quite well on the region, on the as well, so please share your opinions on the same question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Dr. Moderator. Thank you to Prof. Also, uh, we have one uh, particular particular grant uh, for university lecturers and um, researchers that they have a solution ready to replicate uh, in the community. So uh, we gave them grant, then they have to uh, put certain criteria to follow the requirements, um, such as 100 people uh, benefit, uh, benefiting uh, from the training, from the product, uh, when diffused at the community. So after that, we, uh, we will measure the impact in terms of um, economic, of course, uh, social well-being, uh, happiness index, uh, and a few more, including uh, the, investment, uh, uh, the investment payback. I mean, uh, if let's say in Ringgit we have um, gave them a grant for 200,000. And then over the years, uh, through our um, uh, uh, supervision, uh, we were visiting that places few times until all the milestones has been achieved. And then we will wait. There is a cooling off period for another six to one year. We will go back and see their sustainability. If there is a case of unsuccess story, what Yim is doing, we will match and also call for other experts to help. So I think that is uh, part of the uh, grant that we provide to the researchers uh, into the communities. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, I think I want to ask the same question to Mr. Vuan as well on uh, the Philippine context. What is the critical need? What is the challenges about promoting, let's say, uh, universal industry linkage on uh, the, the grassroots innovator? Yes. Check, check. So uh, to answer that question, um, I think in the Philippines, there's still that uh, there's still that difficulty in terms of penetrating uh, for for uh, the academe to penetrate the industry. Although there are similar 
there are some policies already pushing for this, uh, such as Credo uh, by the Department of Science Technology. Um, I think it's more of a behavioral stoppage that's uh, that's uh, uh, hindering um, uh, innovators to the uh, to to push for uh, a linkage with the academe and the industry. Um, one particular um, issue is also on um, you know it's it's not that known to them that there are certain programs in the academe that are actually providing for linkages to industries. Um, and most, mo most often also, uh, industries might also have their own understanding of R&D. And there's also uh, that other aspect of who owns uh, the rights to whatever is produced afterwards. So I guess there's a lot of uh, nuances still there. And, there's and, and while that, while that uh, certainly is uh, a factor, um, there is still uh, a good uh, movement towards this uh, type of linkages between a university and um, the academe. So we could see uh, there, there's, this, there's a creation of a movement uh, within uh, the government called the Regional Inclusive uh, Centers. So we call it RICS. Um, so uh, in it, it's actually chaired by um, the NEDA, so that's the Economic Department of the country, uh, DOST, so that's the Science and Technology, and also s uh, some regional departments as well, um, and also including HEIs, so higher education institutions are also there, uh, to ensure that there is this type of linkages, uh, th that these linkages are actually pushed into the fore. Uh, and surprisingly, in these RICs, since uh, there is really the, the IRR for this doesn't really indicate who is the lead, surprisingly, uh, the academe uh, is spearheading some of the initiatives. So you could see them as uh, providing for a more uh, coordination role and secretariat role and trying to really uh, push for uh, more activities within these uh, different sectors to work together to promote innovation and also uh, commercialization of different products. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I agree on what uh, our panelist has mentioned about the critical needs, the challenge or something like this. But I want to hear from the perspective of the universities in uh, tone you are working directly in the university, you might know very well. And uh, I want to know what, what uh, do you have anything else to add on the challenge that you face on promoting the uni university and the linkages, and what is the critical need that you think ha must be in place to promote the university and the linkage, especially for uh, the innovation uh, for the grassroots innovator. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. Actually, uh, it's kind of a hard question to answer. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem that uh, the innovation that doesn't happen is uh, because uh, the disconnection between uh, relevant stakeholders. As uh, I, I'm totally agree uh, with other panelists that we need a lot of things that need to work together. So in the UL case, uh, Sometimes uh, we want to promote industrial university linkage. Uh, but uh, some challenge is, uh, as uh, Professor mentioned, like uh, sometimes uh, some sector does, doesn't interested in it because uh, they don't have enough information. Uh, sometimes they work like the private sector is they work in the area. University, they work in another purpose in their place. So the disconnection is uh, the, the one thing that uh, we need to, to solve the problem. And the solution, I think, uh, to have more even, to have more uh, discussion, to bring or to have the place that bring university people and to bring the industrial people together, to talk together, to address what their challenge, to address what university can provide, so this is uh, the, the thing that uh, will foster the collaboration between the industry. Yeah. So the last point is, uh, I repeat it again, is the uh, place or the mechanism that bring all 
the stakeholder to come to talk quite often as possible. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Wang Yantong. So I would like to hear from Mr. Uh, Dr. Chi, uh, Chai as well. Uh, what is, uh, do you have anything to add? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, from my side, uh, I found there is uh, some challenge in our university. Actually, uh, the enterprise uh, industry, they have uh, has very high equipment, high technology. That's why the industry, they don't believe or drop in the university because uh, the university, we, s we have human resources also, but we don't, we don't have the uh, modern equipment or uh, technique or new technology that high uh, uh, compared to in industry. That's why this, this one is a uh, very challenge with the industry and university. So in, the, in my opinion solution, how we can work with industry. In, in, the, 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 in the program education, we have the uh, internship. During the student internship, we, we can work with the industry. For example, one semester, the student can work in industry, and after that, that student can become to the human resource for industry. This, uh, we are thinking to do like that for the solution to connect between industrial and university. So this is my opinion. Okay, thank all. you very much, Wong, for uh, your uh, insights. Actually, uh, we learn a lot from uh, this uh, question, and we know that uh, there are some kind of things that we need in order to promote UIL linkages. And uh, before I ask another question, I would like to ask the participant if you have any question to ask uh, our panelists, because uh, they are it is a, a good opportunity to learn from our uh, panelists from different uh, this perspective from different countries. If you have any question, please. Uh, do we have any question from uh, uh, please? Our team, can you give the mic to? Hello. Hello. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and congratulations to all the moderators. This question's, oh, sorry, before that, my name is Zula Fendi. I'm from the Malaysian Innovation Foundation, and I would like to get the perspective from Mr. Juan Gabriel, since you are a social innovation analyst, and I would like to know about the future of social innovation in the next five years, is there any uh, uh, bright future in terms of helping out the those who are vulnerable groups and uh, who are in the poor community? And what do you see uh, ASEAN is going to, uh, you know, is it going to expand the social in in innovation uh, fields in, in ASEAN countries? Thank you. Hello, hello. Thanks for that question. Uh, it's, uh, I think in terms of uh, mapping out the future of uh, how social innovation will be mainstreamed, not only in the Philippines, of course, but also uh, within the ASEAN region, I think that's a very hard uh, question to answer. But uh, to answer it in my own experience, I think, you know, from from the perspective and historical pers uh, from the historical perspective of the ASEAN country, uh, you know, we're, we're very resilient. And I think uh, in terms of uh, having opportunities for social innovation, especially inclusive innovation, uh, it, it, it the region is really a hotbed for that. So in terms of uh, um, uh, pointing out the timeline, and I think it's just increasing uh, in terms of uh, promotion, in terms of importance, and also in terms of impact. Right? Um, uh, the other, the other, uh, another aspect to the uptake in social innovation is also um, are, are the countries mapping these out? You know, you might see a vendor down the street using a new form of technology that they used from discarded materials 
that normally wouldn't really account as innovation. But uh, as, as what we realized in some of our uh, approaches, such as the grind approach and the salik lak by uh, activity, is we try and also uh, it put these into an inventory. So at least if if some some communities or at least some uh, marginalized uh, uh, sectors would would need specific uh, innovations such as this, then they would have a an option to choose from, like a, a list of options to choose from. So I guess uh, just to close uh, the question, um, we the, the ASEAN country is really uh, a good place for social innovation. And I think it just needs that push. It, it just needs that discourse that there is such a thing as social innovation. Since usually the innovation that we understand and know of is technological or commercial. Uh, it's it's really this this type of uh, innovation is sort of still coming up, but I hope it, uh, it'll it'll come uh, with a great impact. There, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Okay, um, in Malaysia for the 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 development of uh, social innovation, uh, we will come out. With um, the policy by next year, and also the roadmap for social innovation up to 2030. Together, the pillar um, that we have now, one is this the one that I, I sh I've shared just now, 10 on 10 SAIE ecosystem uh, built by the uh, uh, science of Ac Malaysia Science Academy, and together with the uh, policy. STI um, at Malaysia level. So uh, we have already mapped uh, the stages of the social innovation. And then as an organization, we are the one that enable both sides. One at the commercialization, another one is for from the research part. So we can understand that um, if we only concentrate on the commercialization, we will forget the sustainability part by the researcher, meaning that on certain resources may be lost over time. But we need researcher to give us input on the way forward of certain things. So this is where YIM, the Malaysia Innovation Foundation, play our role, just to balance everything and to balance everyone in accordance to what uh, our uh, our national needs, not for the purpose of researchers' need, or uh, maybe on the commercialization and profit making part. So I think that that would um, um, stir and also will enhance the efficiency of deliverables in a social innovation. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Actually, yeah. do you have a follow-up question? <laughs> Yes, I have another question to Mr. Juan since he's wearing two hats today uh, as a social analyst and social innovation analyst and from the UNDP. And I don't know if you can share this with us today. What are the perspective of the UNDP uh, in the Asian region right now about the issues of social innovation? Um. <coughs> Okay, so just really quickly, um, I think the UNDP is really pushing for social innovation as one of its thrusts, um, and that's you could you can already see it. Uh, some of our projects are already have a social innovation component. So most of the projects that are de being developed has a component for for this. So yes, it's very important. Hello, hello, hello. Actually, I have some question for uh, for Prof, uh, Prof Krishna and Dr. Chim. Can can I ask some question? Okay. Uh, yeah, ju just a, a little bit. 
Uh, I, I just want to know um, how actually uh, y you are in the industry about uh, agro industry and uh, Dr. Krishna also in the uh, as a veterinary and animal scientist and Dr. Chim also in the agro industry. Can I know uh, how uh, about the digital livestock platform in your country? How they can help actually the farmer? to manage their farm more efficiently? Uh, the, the, the red map, the, uh, the, plat uh, the platform that uh, help the farmer on the agro-industry or food processing? Yeah. Uh, I, ju I just want to know, uh, is it uh, in your country, uh, yeah. digital platform play the best, the best role to, uh, to give some benefit to the farmer? <laughs> Can <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry because uh, professor need to leave to the embassy, so I would like to end uh, the session uh, right now. And if you have any question, maybe uh, uh, yes. Okay. Do you have his email? Maybe you can send him email, and then he can. Uh, as you uh, answer all the questions that you have in mind. And uh, let me finish this discussion by uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, sh uh, share of our panelists. Please uh, join me to give a big round of applause to our panelists. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I will uh, leave the floor to uh, our MC for the next agenda. Thank you very much. Um, next agenda will be the handing of the gift. So uh, I would like to invite Dr. Jimtechi Patha for handing the gift to our guest of uh, honor. Um, so first one will be to our moderator. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, next, uh, preferably to Professor Krishna because uh, he has to leave. <laughs> very sorry. <laughs> he has a very important meeting at the embassy, so yes. Uh, next one uh, will be to uh, Dr. Shamila from Malaysia. Thank you very much. Uh, next one will be to Dr. Ha from Cambodia. Uh, yeah, and the next uh, panelist is Mr. Joan Kapoor Mare. Last but not least, to Dr. Jim Chang from all UA Cambodia. And thank you. And we hope to have one uh, final photo session together. Please come to the front. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, of COVID, thank you. <laughs> yeah, please keep smiling. <laughs> A lot of camera. <laughs> 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 thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so for the panelists, please be informed that uh, you are invited to the G2G meeting. I think the team has already informed. And tomorrow in the morning, we will have G2G meeting and in the afternoon,